The Ottoman Empire, From Triumph to Disaster, Second Video. 14th century sources suggest that Murad styled himself, modestly as Emir and not yet as Sultan and Apos. The emirate that he had, established on the basis of his inheritance from Orhan consisted of a federation of lords under Ottoman suzerainty, the lands which he had inherited around Bursa in Anatolia and the lands in Thrace, around Adirne probably came directly under the rule of Murad himself or of his appointees. After the Germianid marriage of 1375-6, much of Ottoman Anatolia probably came under the rule of his son, Bayezid. Political power in the Balkan Peninsula lay largely with the Muslim marcher lords, whether these, like Evrenos in Macedonia, were of Turkish origin, or whether, like the Mihaglu family in northeastern Bulgaria, they were converts from Christianity. In addition, many of the Christian dynasts of the Balkan Peninsula, such as Esau Bundelmandi of Ioannina, George Strasimirovic of Zeta, Shishman and Ivanko in Bulgaria, and the Byzantine emperor and his son Theodore of Mistra, were Murad's vassals. They owed him tribute and provided him with troops, but in return received support against their enemies. The Ottoman Empire was to retain a similar political structure until after 1450. News of Murad's death at Kosovo had, in all probability, reached Anatolia in the months after the battle and encouraged neighboring powers to seize Ottoman lands. A contemporary source mentions in particular that Aladdin of Karaman had recovered Bays, Ayer, and that the Lord of Germian had also tried to regain his lost lands. Bayezid's response came in early 1390. By March of that year he had conquered the three principalities on the Aegean shore of Anatolia, Saruhan, Aden, and Mentish, retaken Bays, Ayer from Karaman and, in this, or a later campaign, seized the lands that remained to Germian. The campaign, while extending Bayezid's territories, did not secure peace. During its course, one of Bayezid's Anatolian vassals, Suleiman Pasha of Kastamanu, transferred his allegiance from Bayezid to Burhan Adin, the ruler of much of central Anatolia, and Bayezid's next campaign was against Suleiman Pasha. Its outcome was his execution in 1391 and the annexation of his realms. Next, Bayezid continued eastwards against Burhan Adin, his army strengthened as local lords from northern Anatolia attached their forces to his. He suffered a defeat at Kurumlu, but this was clearly not so severe as to prevent his further advance. In December, however, weather, terrain and events in Europe forced him to return westwards. During the course of the campaign he had annexed Kastamanu, and perhaps obtained the allegiance of the lords and clan chiefs of northern Anatolia. The army that he led was very different from that of the first two Ottoman rulers. He now had in his, following his vassal, the Byzantine Emperor Manuel II with a contingent of Byzantine troops and also, on Manuel's testimony, contingents of Serbs, Bulgarians, and Albanians.15. In 1392, Bayezid's main concern seems to have been with Serbia. After the Battle of Kosovo, Serbia faced a threat of invasion from the Kingdom of Hungary to the north, and from the Ottomans to the south and east. It clearly had to accept the overlordship of one in order to gain protection from the other. A faction in Serbia preferred it seems, Bayezid to King Sigismund of Hungary, and to formalize the arrangement Bayezid married Olivera, the sister of Lazar's son and successor, Stephen Lazarevich and Apos. Stephen was henceforth Bayezid's vassal. At the same time Bayezid asserted his suzerainty over George, Strasimirovic of Zeta and VLK Brankovic, Lord of Prevtina. Bayezid's next concern was Bulgaria, why he should have invaded Tsar, Shishman's territory in 1393 and captured his capital of Tarnovo is not Clear, Shishman had perhaps, for a second time, broken his allegiance to the Ottoman ruler. This was, however, only a preliminary engagement. Two years later, in order presumably to preempt the consequences of an anti-Turkish alliance between King Sigismund of Hungary and Voivoda Mercia of Wallachia, Bayezid led his army to the north of the Danube and encountered the Wallachians in a violent, but indecisive battle. On his return he entered Tarnovo and executed Tsar Shishman, exiling other members of the dynasty to governorships in Anatolia, the establishment of Ottoman suzerainty over Serbia, the extinction of the Tsardom of Bulgaria, and Bayezid's invasion of Wallachia, posed a threat to the Kingdom of Hungary, lying to the north of the Danube. In the face of this danger, King Sigismund renewed his efforts to form an anti-Turkish league. It was not difficult to find allies among those whose lands Bayezid threatened, the first of whom was the Byzantine Emperor Manuel II. In 1394, Bayezid had placed Constantinople under siege, 16 and it had become clear that the city could not survive without assistance from foreign powers. The emperor's main hope was Venice whose possessions in mainland 
Greece suffered from Turkish raids, and whose Aegean strongholds, were coming under attack from Bayezid's ships at Gallipoli. By 1396, Sigismund, the Emperor Manuel and Venice had agreed to contribute, troops and ships to a war against Bayezid. A more significant contingent came from France and Burgundy. In 1395, a truce between France and England had released the Franco-Burgundian knights for adventures elsewhere, and a contingent under John of Navarre, the son of the Duke of Burgundy, traveled to Hungary to join Sigismund's crusade against Bayezid. Bayezid encountered the crusaders in 1396 at Nicopolis, Nicopol, on the Danube in Bulgaria. His lightly armed cavalry, including a contingent under Stephen Lazarevich, outmaneuvered the heavily armed western knights, drawing them into a trap and inflicting a total defeat. The survivors whom Bayezid did not execute, he kept for ransom. Following his victory, Bayezid removed the last independent Bulgarian lord, Srotsimir of Vidin, consolidating Ottoman domination of the lands south of the Danube. Hungary, however, while exposed to raids, did not face the invasion which King Sigismund had evidently feared. In 1397, Bayezid instead led his army to Anatolia. The reason for his departure from Europe into Asia was the action of the Emir of Karaman, Aladdin, who, while Bayezid encountered the crusaders at Nicopolis, had attacked and taken prisoner his governor-general in Anatolia. Bayezid's response was decisive. In 1397 he invaded Karaman, occupied Konya, its major city, and executed Aladdin. Aladdin was also his brother-in-law and, when he marched south to lay siege to Larand, his sister, Aladdin's widow, ordered the garrison to open the gates to Bayezid. With the death of Aladdin and the removal of his widow to Bursa, Karaman became an Ottoman territory, and a base for further conquest in the northeast. This involved Bayezid in further conflict with Buran Aldin of Shivas, whom he had first encountered in his Anatolian campaign of 1391. In 1398, he expelled Buran Aldin from Shivas, annexed the small principalities near the Black Sea coast and then, following Buran Aldin's death, occupied Shivas itself. Soon afterwards, probably in 1399, he seized Malatya to the east of Shivas, a northernmost outpost of the Mamluk. Sultans of Cairo. By 1401, he had advanced along the upper Euphrates Valley to take Erzincan from its lord, to Hartan. Bayezid's ambitions in eastern Anatolia had a fatal consequence. The period of his conquests had coincided with the growth of another empire to the east. Between the 1370s and 1400s, Timur 17, or Tamerlane, had from humble beginnings overrun lands in Central Asia, southern Russia, Iran, and Azerbaijan, and out of these, created an empire of vassals, with its capital at Samarkand. By 1400, the westward expansion of Timur's empire and the eastward expansion of Bayezid's led to conflict. The first blow fell in 1400, when Timur sacked Shivas. In 1401, he led his army into Syria, plundering Aleppo, Homs, Hama, Baalbek, and Damascus, returning to spend the winter of 1401-2 in Karaba in the Caucasus. Disputes with Bayezid over the allegiance of vassals provided Timur with an excuse for war and, in 1402, he invaded Bayezid's realms, camping in July, outside Ankara. Timur's strategy was as much political as military, exploiting the fragile loyalties of Bayezid's subjects in Anatolia. In 1390, the lords of the old emirates of Jermian, Saruhan, Aden and Mentish had sought the protection of Timur after Bayezid had annexed their lands. He now placed these men in prominent positions in his army. At the same time, his envoys had negotiated with the tribal chiefs of Anatolia, whose men fought in Bayezid's army, to desert Bayezid on the battlefield. Furthermore, before the battle began, he had occupied a position which controlled access to the water supplies, exhausting Bayezid's men even before the conflict. His strategy succeeded. When the battle opened, the cavalrymen from the old emirates, seeing their former lords in Timur's army, deserted Bayezid. So, as pre-arranged, did the tribal levies. When these men changed sides, the forces under the command of his elder and younger sons, Suleiman and Mehmed, abandoned the field, leaving Bayezid with only his Janissary bodyguard and the contingent from Serbia under Stephen Lazarevich and Apos. He ended the battle a prisoner of Timur. He died a year later, still in captivity. Timur followed the battle with a campaign of massacre and plunder in western Anatolia, which lasted until the summer of 1403.18. He died in 1405, in the early stages of a campaign against China.